Trolleybus is one of the oldest and most widespread forms of public electric transport. It can be found in hundreds of cities around the world. However, in recent years some countries have begun to close their trolleybus systems and replace them with electric buses or sometimes even a diesel buses. So let's talk about trolleybuses, electric buses and which of them are better for cities. But let's dive into history first. The first electric car that received energy from overhead wires was created by Werner von Siemens in 1882. Then it was just an experiment and mass usage in the cities for passenger transportation began in the 20th century. The British city of Leeds and Bradford were the first in the world to do so in 1911. And then a real trolleybus boom began and new systems started to appear around the world literally on all the continents except the Antarctica. The main advantages of trolleybuses were that they are quiet and eco-friendly. It is much cheaper to build and maintain a trolleybus line than a tram line. Unlike a tram, trolleybuses can go around obstacles. They are much more durable than diesel buses. They are very good at climbing hills, so are well suited for hilly cities. Also, trolleybus drivers can be retrained from bus drivers quite quickly. But there were also a downsides, of course. Trolleybuses has lower passenger capacity than trams. They are much more dependent on the driver's attention and skills, unlike a tram, which is directed by rails. This makes it necessary to have wider lanes and larger buffers for turning. It also requires more effort on a driver's part to pull up to a stop. It is difficult to change routes due to the binding to the contact wires. The contact wires themselves could spoil the image of a street which is especially out of place near architectural monuments. Although, to be fair, in most cases this is not such a big problem and the contact wires are not so striking. Trolleybuses can lose contact with the wires, which is especially common when the network is in poor condition. But even without this, if the quality of the contact network is poor, the speed on the turns will be very low. That means that the catenary network needs to be well maintained for the high quality operation. The life of trolleybuses was very different in various cities and countries. In total, there have been about 800 trolleybus systems in the world over time, but then they were closed in many places. Now there are about 2500 operating trolleybus networks in the world and the largest number of them among European countries is in Ukraine. As of 2014 there were 45 systems, some of which are now unfortunately under occupation or destroyed by Russian aggressors. By the way, do you know where is the largest trolleybus network in the world in terms of total length of lines? In Kyiv, Ukraine. Kyiv also left its footprint in trolleybus history by being the first city to come up with the idea of coupling trolleybuses in pairs so that two trolleybuses could be operated by one driver. After Ukraine, the most trolleybus intensive countries in Europe are Czech Republic, Italy, Switzerland, Bulgaria and Romania. From this list I would highlight the Czech Republic and Switzerland. They not only have a lot of cities with trolleybuses, but also everything is very well designed and executed in terms of engineering. And besides, these countries are home for some of the world's best producers of either trolleybuses or catenary network elements, which sell their products all over the world. You're probably aware of the old Škoda trolleybuses, but this is how the modern ones look like. A curious fact is that Škoda 14 TR trolleybuses, well known among many Europeans, especially Eastern Europeans, were also used recently in San Francisco, USA. They looked a bit different there, but if you look closer, you can recognize some familiar details. And this is how the trolleybuses of the Swiss concern has looked like. There are also countries that have just a few trolleybus systems, but their quality is so good that there is a lot to learn from them, such as Germany, France or the Netherlands. So now let's have a look at some examples of modern trolleybus systems. There are only a few cities in Germany where trolleybus traffic has been preserved and Zollingen is one of them. It is a city in western Germany with a population of 158,000 people. Their network has been operating since 1952 and now has 7 routes with 60 trolleybuses. In the 80s they wanted to close it down, but as a result of intense debates they saved it and began to modernize. 
The city began to switch from traditional trolley buses to autonomous trolley buses, which can run without being connected to the overhead wires. First, they used an additional diesel engine for this purpose. This was not super eco-friendly, so over time the city switched to trolley buses with batteries that can be recharged from the overhead wires while running. When the network ends, the trolley bus continues to operate on a battery. The range is about 20 kilometers. To reconnect to the wires, they use traps like this one. The trolley poles fall into the place automatically. The driver just sits behind the wheel and presses a button. Also, the trolley buses have a recuperation system so they can generate electricity when braking, which either charges the batteries or returns to the wires. The excess energy is accumulated in external power units that automatically maintain the energy balance in the system. And expanded trolley bus batteries are planned to be reused to increase the power of those external power units. To generate energy, they also use renewable sources. For example, solar panels are installed on the depot roofs and on the buildings along the routes. There are also charging stations at several end stops remote from the network to keep the batteries at the required level. An interesting fact is that Zollingen once sold a whole batch of its old trolley buses to the Argentine city of Mendoza. There, they were successfully brought to the state of bucket of screws, after which Zollingen bought one of them back, restored and placed into its museum. By the way, I plan to make one of my next videos about public transportation in Mendoza. It should be interesting and very educational. So subscribe to the channel. Arnhem is the only city in the Netherlands with a trolleybus network. Now it consists of six routes with 41 trolleybuses. Initially, Arnhem had a tram system, but it was so heavily damaged during the World War II that after the war ended, the city decided not to restore it, but to launch a trolleybuses. The first line started operation in 1949, and since then the network has continued to expand. In the 70s, decline came and some trolleybus lines were turned into bus lines and and the complete closure of the network seemed to be only a matter of time. But the national government reacted quickly enough to finance the operating costs of municipal transport operators. Thanks to this, the city was able to upgrade worn-out lines and began building a new ones. In the 90s, a new stage of development began. The city switched to low-floor articulated trolleybuses and began to work on speeding up their operation. And right now Arnhem is also starting to switch to battery trolleybuses, which can be recharged in motion and run unplugged. Several such trolleybuses from Hess are already operating on one of the routes, and next year a whole batch of Polish Solaris are expected to be delivered. Zurich, with a population of more than 400,000 inhabitants, is the largest city in Switzerland and this is a slightly different story. There is a very powerful tram network here and the trolley bus, which was launched in 1939, works to reinforce it. And as far as I know, there were no ideas to close the trolley bus traffic there. Zurich's trolley bus network is 54 km long with 114 trolley buses in operation and it serves 54 million passengers per year. All the trolley buses are articulated and a fourth of them have even two joints. These vehicles are almost 25 meters long and can accommodate about 200 passengers but they fit perfectly even on a fairly narrow street. And this is a great visual example for some of transportation officials who are saying, oh, our streets are too narrow for so long trolleybuses. Hit the like button if you have this kind of officials in your city. Zurich's trolleybuses also have batteries and can run without being tied to the overhead wires. And of course, all the infrastructure there is in perfect condition, so the trolleybuses run fast and confidently. One of the things we should learn from Zurich is the ability to organize convenient transfers between different types of public transport. Trams and trolleybuses there don't travel around the city alone, but regularly meet each other in a compact hubs within a couple of steps. There is even a special brochure that shows the typical solutions that can be used in different situations.
And also in Zurich you can see many solutions that are simply forbidden by the regulations in some other countries. For example, operation of trams and trolleybuses in one lane with trolleybus wires hanging about the sidewalk. Or crossing a trolleybus line with active railway tracks. Another case I would like to mention is Rome. It's a real metropolis with almost 3 million people and it's interesting because it once had a trolleybus network that was closed but recently began to be restored. The first incarnation of the Roman trolleybus lasted from 1937 to 1972 and on its peak its network reached 137 kilometers in length and there were more than 400 trolleybuses operating on the routes. It was the largest trolleybus system in Italy. By the way, this is a trolleybus built by Alfa Romeo. Yep, that Alfa Romeo. In the early 2000s, the city authorities decided that it would be nice to reduce car traffic and air pollution in the city center and, to do so, decided to restore trolleybus service. The first 30 trolleybuses were ordered from the Polish company Solaris and they have all the modern trolleybus features. They are low floor, articulated and have batteries for autonomous driving without contact wires. The first line was launched in 2005 and in a few years the network has expanded to three lines and about 40 km of overhead wires. Everything is designed in a way that there are no overhead wires in the city center to avoid spoiling of view. And the trolleybuses run on battery power and can connect to the wires further away from the center. In addition to Solaris, the city bought 45 more of these trolleybuses with a slightly strange design from an Italian manufacturer from Bologna, whose name I'd better just write on the screen. So, in general, Rome now has 75 trolleybuses, which is a bit too much for three lines, so looks like the city clearly plans to expand the network in the future. By the way, Rome also has trams and a subway system, but as you can see, the trolleybus also found its place. At this moment, you should probably have a question. Why not just buy electric buses? They don't need any overhead power lines at all. It should be easier, isn't it? They really don't need a catenary wires, but electric bus is not a magical wonder. It's just a tool with its own pros and cons. The main benefit of electric buses compared to trolleybuses is obviously that they are not tied to the overhead lines and can go anywhere. There is no need to maintain kilometers of wires across the city and they don't spoil the image of streets. But there are also plenty of minuses. To ensure that electric bus has a range between 250 and 400 km, its battery must weigh between 2 and 3 tons and this weight needs to be moved constantly using its own energy. For comparison, a similar diesel bus with an average fuel consumption of 30 liters per 100 km needs only about 100 kg of diesel fuel to cover the same distance. The difference is quite significant. The greater weight of the battery means that the frame structure must be reinforced. Because if you simply put such a heavy battery in a standard bus frame, it may not be able to handle the load. Battery capacity is highly dependent on operating conditions. The maximum range declared by the producer is calculated for ideal conditions and will actually be less, especially if you drive in cold weather, extreme heat or on hilly terrain. The actual range is on average about 60% of the passport one. In other words, not 400 km but 240. The battery capacity also decreases over the time. Depending on the battery type, the capacity drop over 10 years can reach 30%. That means that in 10 years the original 400 km of passport range will turn into 280. And this is also an ideal number, which means that a 10-year-old electric bus will actually be able to travel about 170 km on a single charge. After that, the battery has to be replaced and recycled properly, which is very important because it contains lots of highly toxic materials. The recycling of such batteries is essentially a separate industry that also has to be developed if you plan to use electric buses on a large scale. It is also important to understand that electric buses also need their own infrastructure. First of all, there are charging stations and depots where the entire fleet could be charged at night. And also recharging points at the end stops to keep the battery charge at the sufficient level on long routes. All of this calls for millions in investments and maintenance. 
Recharging at the last stop is also a question of time. For a quick partial charge may be enough about 15 minutes. But even this can be a problem for keeping the timetable. That means that you will need additional electric buses and drivers to cover such gaps. And there are also some other issues that are not often mentioned but which should also be kept in mind. Electric car batteries can spontaneously combust and due to chemical reactions inside them such a fire is very difficult to extinguish. In the United States there have been cases when firefighters used 10 times more water to extinguish a Tesla electric car than is usually needed for a conventional car. And the battery of an electric bus is 5 to 10 times bigger than Tesla's, so it will be even much more difficult there. And if such a fire occurs in the depot where dozens of electric buses are parked nearby, the problem can become really catastrophic. Of course, it doesn't happen every day, but it's still a risk that needs to be taken into account. And finally, the ecology. The mining of metals needed to make batteries is a very environmentally harmful process. For example, lithium is mined in the Chilean Atacama desert and 2 million liters of water are required to produce one ton, which seriously disrupts local environment. While the mining of cobalt in Congo is made by slave work in illegal mines. And the Congo is actually a global monopolist, exporting more cobalt than the rest of the world combined. These metals are non-renewable resource, just like oil. So it's a bit of paradox, renewable energy still works from non-renewable resources. And another paradox is that to make any eco-friendly electric car drive in one place, you first have to ruin the environment in another one. So it turns out that electric buses have a whole bunch of minuses and the only one major benefit – the ability to go anywhere without being tied to a contact network. But even this benefit is not so crucial when we are talking about public transport, which anyway runs on fixed routes that should not change every day. So what should we do? I guess you have already seen from modern European cases that the best solution is to combine the best from both sides and to add a small battery to the trolley bus to make it possible operating without being connected to overhead power lines. Some call this an autonomous trolley bus, while others – dynamic, rechargeable electric bus. So it's up to you what name do you like more. These trolley buses charge their batteries in motion from the overhead wires, which makes them more efficient than electric buses need to stand at the end of the line for some time. Also, such vehicles can recharge batteries during braking by recuperation or return excess energy to the network. For proper work in the city, an autonomous range of 50 km is enough to get to a distant bus stop or bypass an accident on a nearby street. This needs a battery that is 10 times smaller and lighter and requires much less resources to produce it. That makes such a trolley bus up to 30% cheaper than a fully battery electric bus. The experience of countries that are already using dynamic trolley bus recharging shows that in many cases it's enough to have only 30% of the route under the catenary wires. This allows quick route changes if necessary or not hanging contact wires where it can spoil the architectural image of the city. It is also important that transition between modes is done automatically. The driver doesn't need to get out of the cab in the signal vest and pull the ropes. He just pushes a button and the poles arise or drop by themselves. It is also possible to use a small diesel engine for autonomous driving, which moves a vehicle through a generator. Maybe it's not so elegant, but it's much cheaper and technically simpler. That's why many European cities started with this and then switched to battery-powered trolley buses. The main point I want to make is that trolley bus is also an electric bus. The only difference is that it doesn't carry a reserve of electricity on board, but receives it from the contact wires in motion. And in terms of the balance of different properties, a trolley bus with a small battery for autonomous operation is the best option. It is eco-friendly, quiet and can be recharged in motion, while a regular electric bus has to waste time at the end stop. 
Such trolley bus is cheaper than an electric bus and its battery needs several times less resources to be produced. Many cities whose trolley bus systems are in poor condition are now tempted to get rid of the contact network which requires constant maintenance and switch to electric buses. But this is just an illusion. An electric bus is not a magical gadget that works by itself. It also requires expensive infrastructure and constant maintenance. Therefore, in my opinion, cities that have trolleybus systems shouldn't blindly replace them with electric buses, but develop and improve what they have. They should update the infrastructure, switch to renewable energy sources and purchase modern rolling stock with autonomous driving ability. It is much more reasonable to use what we have as a foundation and modernize it, then to throw everything to trash and build a new system from scratch. And that's all for a moment. Thanks for watching and if you liked this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and leave your comments. And also please consider supporting of this channel through Patreon. See you in the next videos.